Alright folks, welcome to this exciting video where you once again join me in the wild landscape of Scotland and today we've come to an abandoned estate on the outer perimeter of Brechin and Angus, Scotland and it's literally just at the river side so at the river south esks down here and then the Angus show fields up there anybody that knows Angus that's basically where we are and we're basically documenting abandoned history from an estate mansion which is no longer existent here and the land is now owned by Dalhousie Estate but there's some cool remnants from the abandoned estate like where the mansion was and we've seen the ice house and we've seen the gas works if you go back and look at the previous couple of episodes here that's the things that we've been exploring but in this episode there's another crazy building that we're going to go and look at folks so stay tuned for that but basically for this intro i'm just wanting to have a look along here and see if there's anything around this corner i think this path just kind of keeps on going yeah that's mad there's a proper path right around there but i'm wanting to go and there's another building up here basically and it looks like it's been a little folly sometimes these abandoned states had a small folly or whatever for the people of the estate like the laird and lady if they were out for a walk on a sunday they used to have these little follies that they could sit in and get shelter or they could sit in and relax maybe with a cup of tea brought down from the butler or maid and then check this out here's another bit of the history this is almost like their garden perimeter gate and this is one of their main like last remaining gates here at this site that i've seen that's this size yeah check it out you can see the size of it this big chunk of iron it's unusual how it's like this it's almost like the fence has come around at this angle back when estates like this were in their prime they were a very private area and only estate workers would be the people that would see this apart from the family members themselves but up there on that plinth of land is actually where the massive mansion house used to be which owned all this land and it's crazy just to see the remnants of that just think how long ago this gate was put in 1800s for sure it's just mad maybe 1900s but likely 1800s and it's like there's been that metal perimeter fence right around here but an interesting thing i was just noticing it's like there's been a road here or maybe an old track around the perimeter here this is the river south esk which gets extremely ferocious when the storms and you can see evidence of that from all the bushes and stuff that's just collected in the trees. So with all the states and places like this, I love to go around and take in every detail of the history and try and record everything that's still on show before it degrades or disappears forever. And that's how I often just do kind of short videos with different details around the estate so then you can kind of get more of an idea of each thing because probably if I put it all in one video it would be too long sometimes the details of the history may be missed but it's just crazy to see the size of some of these trees and just imagine the massive mansion here overlooking this piece of land maybe the laird would be standing at the top window smoking his pipe and his wife would be walking around here taking in all the garden I think there's still paths and stuff like that for like angling and fishermen and stuff like that coming down and the reason all this area here is so worn out is from the horses and stuff running round yeah i'm guessing a lot of these trees were probably planted because they're big they must have been planted at the time that the estate was in its prime i'm just about to go and look at this because it looks like the sun at the bottom of this big tree in front of me Yeah, now I've gotten closer. It looks like there's maybe been a high chair there for the gamekeeper sitting in when he's shooting. Or it's maybe even been part of like a horse jump. Look at this, folks. This is a giant sequoia tree. Can you always see these planted at the big houses? And this is what I was saying in one of the previous videos at this estate. Quite often these places in Scotland, like the big estates, had rare plants and trees and shrubs that the common man would never normally see because estates like this could import them 
all the way from all over the world. And that's how trees like this, the punching tree we used to call it when we were young, that's how they were brought here. And you see them at a lot of the massive like mansion houses, even like the House of Dunn and stuff like that. But the width of that tree there is just huge. So big, so special. But quite often when they were importing trees and bushes and shrubs, sometimes they would import like a really evasive species without realizing it. And that's how things like giant hogweed and other plants got brought to this country. And they're still a problem to this day. They need sprayed out. If you touch the giant hogweed, you end up with a lifetime rash. Can it can often scar you for life. Oh look at this here. See, here's a detail of the history. I was theorizing that there was an original perimeter fence around here. And look, we can see details of it. Look, this is the fence that we saw at the far end, which actually is not as old. Look, here's the original old fence here, which is potentially wiped away. Further down there, it's maybe been washed out by the river. This is what it would have originally looked like, folks. Wow. This is another piece of the puzzle to this secret garden adventure here. Look at this, the way the tree has grown. With the thing going right through it. Wow. This is totally mad. This tree's probably quite old as well. It looks like quite a rough rock tree, folks. Anyway, the next crazy building that I'm wanting to visit is actually just here. And it's like a little folly kind of house, a little hut. It's a secret hut hidden in a Scottish forest, folks. Hidden and forgotten. Taken over by nature and time itself. And this is a prime example of the sort of places that I just love exploring. As I look around, I can see birds of prey circling up in the sky. At one time, they would have been circling over the chimneys of the mansion house, whereas now they're just flying over the foundation, looking for their tea. Maybe rabbits, or mice, anything they can eat. They'll swoop down, but I hear them keying and cawing. Yeah, look at this here. This is interesting. Check out the way this is built. This little... Oh, wow. Check that out, folks. This is what I love about these adventures. You just never know what you're about to see. And this is a prime example of some incredible stonework. The way those stones are put in there, it's just crazy. And then that, like it's crazy, look, I'm gonna try and get a decent shot looking out there. Look at the way that's built and constructed. Wow. It's almost been like a mill laid. And just check out, this is the little hut here that I was wanting to go and see. Just check that out for an abandoned bit of history, folks. It's just so cool. I'm always just blown away that there's so much from different eras of time, different times in history, just waiting to be explored and uncovered. With things like this, we've never seen it before on the channel, and it's just so crazy. Sometimes the, the adventure climbing through estates and lands like this, just to get to this, it's just mad. So let's check this out and see what levels of history here we can uncover and what details of history we can uncover. Because look, I believe this outer wall here, you can see this outer piece, it's almost like this has been added on at a different time. Because look, it's built separate from the original construction. Look at the wooden carving up there on the eaves of the roof. Wow. See, nothing was plain. Estates like this, they had the best of everything, and buildings like this prove that. Check it out, this tree here has grown. It shows how long a place like this has been abandoned. And just look at this graffiti on the tree. It's probably hard to even make out some of these dates. Almost looks like 41. Yeah, this, is, this was probably written at an ancient time. People hanging out here. Because I think an estate, like a building like this, has been abandoned for a long time. Okay, what's crazy, the noise of that little stream there must drop off like a waterfall into the river. And that's the other end. Like, when I came into this estate grounds, I could see there had been a head of water. So I'm wondering if 
the water had been used maybe for a generator for the big house at a certain time in its history. Look at the shape of this chimney. I believe it would have had a wee chimney can on the top originally. And even this tree, it's had some graffiti here which can't be seen anymore. It looks like a big love heart. Probably some lovers used to come down to this spot for a a little quiet walk. Look at this, the way the, the building's made out of sedimentary rock. Look at that inside the rock. Crazy folks. So I'm just thinking here, this might have been like an outhouse at one time, this small end bit of the building, because it could have been a folly for them. And then as time progressed and toilet technology improved, maybe they realised that they needed a little toilet down here to stop the laird having to go so far back up to the mansion. And it's interesting just to see it. There's no much left to this side bit of the building like that. The old stonework. It looks like the wood's been painted red. Just imagine that noise when the door was opening. Wow, let's see what is left of this house. <gasps> wow. <laughs> so yeah, folks, I got such a fright there. Dogs came round barking and honestly, I jumped out of my skin. But shout out to that nice lady that was walking the dog. She says that she knows who I am. So she must have seen the BKR videos and maybe she'll see herself. Shout out to you if you see yourself on this video this week. Yeah, it's mad to find history like this just hidden. And look at the character of these old arched windows. It's so cool. But yeah, when those dogs came round barking, I lost my train of thought. I didn't even know what I was saying. But look at this kind of veranda bit of here. Look, it drops straight down to the river. Wow. Look at the waterfall there. I would love to get down there and have a look. That waterfall actually drops from a proper height there. It's a proper madness like. Yeah, just check out this hut. Incredible. It has had red windows and look, look how the windows have been. They've been sash windows. You can see the rollers. And then the top half must have had little square panes of glass. And then inside it's had the wee fireplace. Look, you can see it's been wooden lined with like tongue and groove. I'm not sure if it was adapted and changed over the years. Look at this. You can see where the old door frame and stuff was connected into the stone. Yeah, it's been just a basic little folly. But this is what I say about the follies. It's actually. Again, they would have been able to come in here on a cold winter's day, maybe, if they were out for a walk around the estate. They maybe sat in here and played a game of cards with the fire crackling away. Just check it up the chimney, folks. Yeah, you can see how the stones are damaged for the heat there. Even the shape of the lintel stone and the fire is cool. Mad. It's just absolutely mad. I say that a lot on the adventures when I'm exploring, but when you're taking all this stuff in that you've never seen, it's just mind-blowing. Like, thinking of the people that constructed this, and the people that it was constructed for, and how many years has passed since it was built. Today, we're just left with slight remains of what was there. And look, you can see here how the rough stone was used inside where it wasn't seen. And then the finer stone was used out the front as the facing stones. And just the detail of that one stone on its own, it's been so well carved and positioned. It's amazing. And it's just about falling down. Most of the roof's gone above my head. And that's why it's so cool to come and like, record this stuff before it does fall down and get lost. Years to come, people can see how it was. Because I believe this wood's probably going to be one of the first things to fall down. Look, you can see there's been a mantelpiece here. There's maybe been an old mantelpiece and then later on there's been a different one, a bigger one fitted. Maybe so they could actually stand there with their whiskey. They'd be standing at the fire looking out the window. Maybe the boy even used to sit there with a fishing rod casting. Crazy. And then look up here. There's been maybe a corner shelf unit. 
There's a lot of graffiti being scored in over the years. What an interesting little building though that is. These holes were obviously put in to attach the wood on. But the arched windows are some of my favourite. The way all the wood and stuff shaped as well. The stones, just... Yeah, the architecture of these wee buildings. It's often like a fairy tale location, I would say. And from the size of these trees coming out of the side of the foundations, you can just tell like how old a place like this must be. Wow. It's been so cool to see this. Look at the detail actually here, above the door. Look at the stone carving. That's often why I keep walking around these places a few times when I come to them. It's because each time you keep noticing more things. If you just have a quick walk around and then away, you then notice those individual details. But yeah, it's had like, any, like basically folk like this just got anything they needed. Kind of, if they wanted a little hut like this, it was built to the highest order with the finest of materials. And we can see that from what's left. All the wood carved and even the exterior pieces of the roof. They're all finely carved. Yeah, it's just beautiful scenes, folks. Beautiful landscape. I'm waiting to try and go down to the riverside now and record this waterfall because it drops farther than what I was thinking. Oh, that's just such a special bit of history right there. I was just back around here, folks, getting some more photographs before I went down to the waterfall and I just thought I'd stick the camera back on because I'm just blown away by this little building. So special to see. Yeah, and this is a serious flow of water over here. I need to try and not fall in. I'm wanting to go down to the edge though and record it. Oh, look, here's the old perimeter fence. Oh, look, there's an old gate here. Hidden and forgotten, look, the tree's part of it. Wow. So that just goes to show, like, this has been an accessible area, not so overgrown originally. My, the places I end up climbing through, folks, for these adventures, it's just blowing my mind right now. That little house was just a perfect little thing to explore. A little folly. Yeah, look at this folks, this is what I suspected when I was saying this fe this fence most likely came right along here. Look at that detail. Look at the old cast iron pillar. It's just hanging on there. Look, I can poke it with my finger and it swings around. And that shows how the history is getting swallowed up from the river here. Wow. And it shows this tree is massive, but this fence grows like the trees growing around the massive fence these sleeves are a nightmare folks they've got velcro on them but every time i point at something it just unvelcros itself yeah, this is crazy folks look at this waterfall it's probably not advised that anybody would come here i wouldn't advise anybody to come here because i'm right now i'm right above the height of the river no way, like, river southeast, we're doing it. Check out that waterfall. And look at the stonework in front of that building too. I can't really get any closer than this, but it's a mad scene. All this has been built up with that metal fence. And as it's all just, like, fallen away and crumbled into the river, this is all that's left. Probably if you had a metal detector or a magnet even, you would find metal from it down in the river. So there you go folks, that's an exclusive angle. Okay, you what, I could actually climb, I don't know how strong it is. Here we are. Don't know how sensible this is folks. Yes, I'm right on top of this tree. It seems pretty strong. Yes, look at this folks, we've made it. Look at the waterfall. Wow. And that little folly is just up at the top. 
Anyway, let's climb on back out of here. I'm trying to swap hands. Wow, the sort of places I go, it's just, I love it. I love trying to get angles like that, to see things that's unseen. And once that tree falls away, nobody will ever be able to see it from that angle. And just look at the way this fence has disappeared over the years. That's how I say videos like this is keeping that history alive. Seeing things from angles like that, it's almost impossible. Anyway, I need to change the battery out on this because it's down to like 3%. So yeah, I'll get back to you in two seconds, folks. So that little hut there, the little follies at the bottom of this forest, and I'm just about to head on straight up here just now. And I'm going to try and find the, uh, the route out. I'm going a different route to what I was when I came in. But that's what I try and do on these adventures. And that's how you can find the maximum amount of history. But since I came in, a couple of videos ago, it's been so mad to see what we've seen. We've documented the old mansion house and its surroundings, kind of its garden area, some of the old steps and gates, and even those fancy chairs were found. A couple of videos ago, folks, go back. The last couple of videos is also like different areas here, little bits of history. And then in the first video, we also found and explored the old ice house, which leads down under the ground. And then in the next episode, we looked at the gas works, which was creating the gas for this mansion house and estate. And then in this episode, we've looked at the folly, where they may have had times of leisure, times of fun, and times of relaxation. So we've seen it all, from the main hub of the estate, the industrial goings on of the estate to keep everything ticking over, and then the areas where they would have relaxed. And it's just mad to think that's all just skeletons of history left from an ancient time here in Angus. Hardly seen, hardly documented, but you've seen it here today, folks, on this adventure. And who knows what we'll see around this corner. Because it's always, it blows my mind how much history is just all around. It's crazy as well, having like a variation of history. Different things from all different times. World War II, or ancient mansion house history. Cold War history even. Yeah, it's just great fun. And I'm actually at the other side of that waterway now, so I think I'm going to have to keep pushing up this wood. Because originally I came in from this direction here. So I'm just kind of picking the best route here, folks. But it's just some wild land. It looks so overgrown here. I'm going to have to try and keep going this way until I get to the bridge. But there's like no real route here. Right folks, I need to cross this waterway which is like a loch, <laughs> like a river I mean, sorry. And I'm literally like balancing on this tree here. And I'm going to try and walk all the way across this waterway, so it's a mad balancing act. I've judged the tree, I've done a health and safety analysis on it here, and it should be good, as long as I don't fall off it. But the tree's now going to roll over, because you can see the shape of it. Yes, here's the river. That's sometimes the easiest way to cross it. The fallen tree acts like a bridge. I would have had to maybe walk quite far to get across, because it looks like that proper sticky soil that you would probably be knee deep in. Yeah, this is crazy right here, folks. You can see how the tree's sheared as it's fallen. Wow. That's what I love about adventures though, folks. On this channel, not only abandoned history, but the crazy landscapes that I climb through to get to the abandoned history. Sometimes it's just like off the beaten path. Spontaneous directions, like. And there we go, we've just climbed across a fallen tree. Again, probably like last year at this time, I would have had to walk a mad route to get past there. Check out this landscape, folks. I'm literally just going round the edge of this field. My car's parked. Just as you come out of breaking towards Forfar, there's like the, the road that takes you to the dual carriageway. I just kind of parked at the last road before the dual carriageway and then jumped the dike. And then that's the kind of area I'm in just now. Probably from where I parked. It's only like a mile's walk down into that 
fucking wild abandoned lands there that we explored. It's been so cool to go to a location like that and explore around and just uncover so many details of the history. Things that's forgotten and almost lost forever. Some of my favourite things that I saw there was like those old chairs in the wood. The ice house was cool and the gas works. If you want to see any of those previous things, they're on the last videos there. I'm not sure where I'm going for the next adventure folks, but it'll be somewhere fresh. Somewhere never seen before on the channel as usual, that's what I try and do. It's just so interesting, the places I keep finding and all the like the history which is just unknown to me. So much went on in these places and it's just forgotten. The next generation comes through and it's just, everything's different. It's just the buildings are a scar of the history. It's just like the last remains of the history we're uncovering. Sometimes we're in an area like this, once you've seen all those individual things, you get an idea of the estate and how it all worked. But I've said that before, whoa, two deer just went across in front of me. Quite often as well, estates can be shooting. So it just depends like what day of the week you're in there. You have to be vigilant and you have to be aware of like estate operations sometimes to go to places like that. But I thought this scene would be more chilled because there is a lot of horse events and like equestrian stuff here so i thought surely if i'm walking down on foot it should be okay yeah it was a success but that little hut that we saw in this video that was so special i was just sort of imagining them sitting at a wee table playing cards maybe dominoes or something like that and then there'd be another boy maybe standing at the fireplace having a whiskey you can just imagine the banter and you can just imagine the sort of times it was. Most likely, like, back in those days, it was probably mostly horse and carts out in estates like that. Turning up at the big house, you would just hear the, the cart wheels on the gravel. Wow, here's the bird of prey. Gee! Check out this, folks. I actually walked past this area when I was on the way into this location. I didn't think anything of it. But right now, I was just thinking, why would they put a little fence here if there was nothing here? Because the whole area, there's nothing like this. And it got me thinking, is it something related to that waterway that we saw going over the waterfall? Yeah, look, there's been maybe some old sluice mechanism there or whatever. It's not actually as exciting as what I was hoping. When I saw the little fence and stuff, I thought it might be a proper sluice mechanism. Here we are folks, we can hear the rumble of the traffic going up and down that main dual carriageway. That's the main road up east of Scotland here. That dual carriageway goes all the way to Dundee down that way and you can keep on going all the way up like Aberdeen, you name it. It's the main kind of route. And this is interesting because there's actually been the main estate boundary walls, that fancy wall on the outside, but there's actually been another little dry stone dike internally but like when the dual carriageway was put in in that roundabout and stuff the landscape was changed so much you can't really tell can how it was but this was likely like a field dike here where this old dike is it's hard to even tell now it looks like just a pile of rocks but you see it here there was there was probably always a strip of trees and then that'll be the old main road leading around that way which probably went to Forfar before the dual carriageway was built. But now it's just a dead end in there. But, hey, that wall just kind of leads away down. And then that's all new highway construction at the top of the hill. And now I need to jump over this dike. Check this out folks, this must be the original old entrance in here. Oh and look what I've just noticed. Here's an interesting detail. Look, this is the same gates that we saw down at the mansion house. But if you note, know, the one here doesn't have the fancy mechanism. So that shows that this is... Originally when this was built, it was the same estate as the one we've explored in the last couple of episodes. Nowadays it's all been like amalgamated into Dalhousie estate here at Breaker. They own all this land. At one time it was a separate estate on its own, but... It's mad how history, like, times change and over the years. Look at this, it's actually 
in there with lead. There's a metal breast holding the stone on the end of the wall. Crazy, like hundreds of years old, folks. But yeah, I'm just about back at my car, so I'll end this one here. Thanks very much for watching. It's been so interesting to see that history that we've seen today with that little folly down at the riverside. Just the mad adventure to get there and back. It was so cool. But I'm going to end this one here, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in again soon for the next one, wherever I end up going.